Hey, how's it going? And today we're going to do a walkthrough of creating a character class in C++. There's exactly 12 lines of code that we need to write. And I'm not going to be getting too heavy into C++, but I am primarily interested in just showing you the general workflow for doing this because that's what was causing me the most difficulty. And that's one reason I wanted to do this tutorial is that I found it very unforgiving, the process. And I suppose with practice it gets better. But in the beginning, the process is very unforgiving. And so I wanted to document the steps to doing this successfully the first time through. So anyway, we're in Unreal Engine 5.4 and we'll go ahead and launch the engine. And like I said, we're gonna be creating a character class to start with. So a just a basic character class with a camera and a spring arm. So anyway, we go to games here and we're going to go to blank project and we're going to click C++ and I'll just leave this called my project and go create. And it takes a little while for this to load up. So while that's doing that, I thought I would just make a couple points. One of the things that I've discovered in doing this is that if there's one little error at all, the smallest little error in your code will stop it from compiling and you're going to get a big fat red failure and when you're just starting that can be really frustrating because if you're missing a semicolon if anything is off it will not compile and it feels like the whole thing has crashed down on you and it's really just one little thing could just be wrong but that one little thing is all it takes and it stops the whole show so it's important to get your mind around that the other thing is with live coding, there's this interplay between Un Unreal Engine and Visual Studio. It's important to save your work in Visual Studio before you try to compile in Unreal Engine. So you're actually compiling with live coding in Unreal Engine and you're not compiling in Visual Studio. But you need to save it in Visual Studio before you compile. And it's real easy to forget that. What's happened when we started the program is it's actually started Visual Studio for us and Unreal Engine at the same time. So for some reason this output window is opened up. So you see here we're here in Visual Studio and if I click right here on my project this is where the my files are going to be my C++ file and my header file. But there's not much in here right now because we haven't even created the class yet. So what we're going to do is jump over to Unreal Engine and here we are in here. So to get started with building the class, all we have to do is come up here to Tools and it says New C++ Class and we just click that. And then it's very similar to how you create a blueprint. But here's our character and it's a pond that has a movement component to it. So we're going to select that and go Next. And then we're going to give it a name and we give it some sort of prefix. We'll just leave it the prefix My on there. And the reason we do that is so that we know it's our class that we, we built. So now all I have to do is click public and just go create class. And now it's going to do all this stuff in the background and create this, essentially create the template for us. And you'll see live coding is starting as well too. It's kind of mind boggling how much stuff's going on that it does for you. When they talk about learning C++ and Unreal Engine, really, it's almost its own special version of C++ because it's so heavily integrated into Unreal Engine and a lot of it's done for you, a lot of the coding and stuff. So it's very interesting how much heavy lifting they do for you. So here this page pops up and you do, you do want to click reload. Okay, so if we step in here, this is our C++ file and this is our header file. And like I said, I'm not going to be going over all the details of C++, but we will be writing some code here, 12 lines of code. So I guess we should just go ahead and get started on that. In the header file, the first thing that we're going to do is what they call forward declare our classes. So I'm just going to type in class, class, and this is going to be for the U camera component here. And then we end every line of code with a semicolon. And then we're going to create a class for our, what they call the U spring arm component here. And what we're doing is we're going to build our class first, and then we're going to build a blueprint from that class. 
but we're not going to build the blueprint until we have our code successfully compiled. So we're going to just get through the code part and that's going to go actually pretty fast. So then the next thing we're going to do is just drop down here to where protected under protected. And here we're going to go ahead and type in what's U property. And this is what exposes our components to the blueprint. So here we're just going to put in visible anywhere like that. And this is going to be for our U spring component here. U spring arm component right there. I see it right there. And we just here, we just need to put an asterisk and it's going to be spring arm, oops, spring arm comp semicolon. And I'm going to come down a line. I'm just going to copy this control C and go V control V U property. And this is going to be for our U camera component asterisk camera comp semicolon this is normal to see the squiggly line there that doesn't affect anything and i'm just going to go ahead and save all and believe it or not that's all the code that we need to do in the header file so now i'm just going to go over here to the c++ file and there's a couple things that we need to do here so i'm going to come down here essentially to right under here. This is what we call the constructor and such is going to instantiate our components. So I'm going to reference that spring arm component that we just created and we go equals and there's a method called create default subject object. That's what we want there. And we do the angle brackets here. And we're going to go use spring arm component. That's the type spring arm component. There it is right there. And we just need to give it a name and we go parentheses, double quotes, and we're going to just call it spring arm comp. And this is the name that will appear in the blueprint. And then a semicolon there. And then after that, we're going to go ahead and attach this to the root component in our blueprint. So we're going to go spring arm comp here like that. And then this is a hyphen angle bracket there. And this is going to go set up attachment here. And that's going to be to the root component like that and a semicolon goes there. And we're getting an error because we need to add a includes up on top. And I wanted to do this first before I got to that. So there's just two more lines of code to write now. We're gonna do the same thing now, except for the camera. And we go equals create default sub object. There it is right there. Angle brackets. And that's going to be the U camera component. U camera component right there. And then parentheses, double quotes, and it's going to be called camera comp. There. Put a semicolon there. And then the camera comp, and we go hyphen angle bracket set up attachment and we're going to parent this to our spring arm component so we here we're just going to type in spring arm comp like that to know where the include files are if we hold on control and click on this it's going to take us to that file and if we just drag up over here you'll see the location. So it's the game frame spring arm component. See that? So now we just need to come back over here and add that include statement here. Go include. And it's gonna be the game frame. Should pop up game frame. 
and then spring arm right there and that's easy enough to do and then one more for the camera and I just know from having done this a million times that it's under camera and we'll go camera component there and it takes it a little while to catch up oh that needs to say camera comp yep and we save all this okay so make sure you save all and that's it so the only thing we see a red squiggly line is right there but that's not going to be a problem everything else looks good to go that's all our C++ code to add a camera and a spring arm component appropriately parented to our character class. Well, which will ultimately be our blueprint. So now we're done here. So let's go into Unreal Engine now. And what I'm going to do is I'm on the content level folder. I'm going to, this is where we can compile and reload our code. So all we have to do is click that. And let's see if we get any errors. And we don't, which is amazing and great. That's always a good feeling. But like I said, if you just make one little error, it'll fail and you have to go figure out what you did wrong. So like I said in the beginning, it's very unforgiving. So now that we know we've successfully created and compiled our C++ class, I can right click here, go to Blueprint Class, come down here to All Classes, and I'm gonna search for it, my character class and there it is right there and we'll go select and I'm just going to leave it called new blueprint and I'm going to go ahead and save and it's going to want to save the level and we'll save it as a new map let me go ahead and save all as well now if we click into this you'll see we've got our camera and our spring arm and everything is appropriately parented just like we coded it now the only issue is, if I click on the new blueprint and drag it into the scene here, we can see what the camera is seeing over there. And if I come down here and I search for auto, this is the only issue remaining here. And this might be a topic for another tutorial, but we can set it to auto possess player right here because we're player zero. And if I hit play, we can see what the camera's seeing, our character's in the scene, but we have no movement, which isn't good, right? So there is a way to code this into our classes that we just did, but I'm gonna kind of do a cheat for that. I'm gonna escape real fast. I'm gonna come up here to add, add feature content pack. I'm gonna go to third person and add to project cancel that and then I'm just going to come in here to the third person blueprint and I'm just going to copy all of this right here go control C then I'm going to close out of here then I'm going to go into the new blueprint here on the event graph I'm going to delete all that and then I'm just going to go control V and bring in all that and go compile and save Come back to the new map and now if I hit play you'll see I've got my character fully immersed in the scene and running around now I don't have a mesh on the character yet but this would be good just for like if you wanted to film something now with the take recorder so if you just wanted to film a scene like this with the camera moving like that you'd be good to go so in a sense you've created a super pawn camera so anyway, that's all I have for today. I hope you found it helpful. Take care, have a great day, and I will talk to you next time.